Hey Lola's, as you can see, we have not moved and I have not got up to get her uh, other shirt. Say so we just been here, still sitting in the same spot, so I said I might as well do another video. I'm gonna talk about um, prices and determining the most you'll spend. I hear a lot of people saying they have caps and they have, you know, um, they have like, you know, the most they'll spend for vinyl babies, the most they'll spend for silicone babies, the most they'll spend for partial babies, stuff like that. I think we all kind of have numbers in our head until that baby can come along and you really, really want it. And then you kind of go outside your comfort zone. Only thing I say is as long as um, I keep doing that with her little bum bum because the way that I weighted her, it she just it just feels like I have a real baby in my hand. Like it the the beads is in her butt. <laughs> oh god, that sounds horrible. But you guys know what I mean, the glass beads, the way that I have it weighted, and it just she just feels like I'm holding a real baby, so I keep bumping her subconsciously, really. Sorry. Um but yeah. So but yeah, um, we have our prices set. Um, I have my prices set all the way down to per artist. I wouldn't pay this much for that artist. I would pay only up to this amount for her work. I want this artist's work, but I'll only pay that much or I'll pay this much. Um, I think we all do it to a certain extent, but like I said, when you find that right baby, you're gonna be like, I'm ready to go out my comfort zone for this one. but. You know, just don't ever go out your true budget zone to the point where you're going to be uncomfortable, if that makes sense. I talk about that all the time. You know, people have buyer's remorse and people have um, brokenness remorse. Um, it's called broken finalia. <laughs> broken finances. I don't know. <laughs> Girl. Um... <laughs> But yeah, don't, you know, don't go too far where you end up suffering from broken finalia. You get the baby home, you're like, oh, it's cute. And then you see one little thing that normally wouldn't bother you as much, but because you paid way over what you're comfortable with, you're like, I don't know, I shouldn't have did this. You be on the phone with your girlfriend or texting or chatting and messenger talking about. Girl, she put a scratch on her face. I ain't asked for that scratch. I mean, I paid $20,000 for this doll and it's got a scratch. Why would she scratch my $20,000 doll? Um, because real babies have little scratches. Oh, yeah. But also, um, one of the tips on the toenails was a little crooked. I really think it... Girl, this is still art. Because you broke the bank, don't mean that artist had to be perfect. So when you go doing that, I think you go too far. And you went outside your comfort zone and now you can't enjoy the baby. You know you made a good purchase when you went a little beyond your spending limit that you had in your head. And you get the baby and you never even think about the price anymore. Like you, It's like once you get the baby, all you just as happy is that you got the baby. That's when you know you did, you really, you really got got it right that time. Um, and trust me, sometimes it it works, sometimes it don't. Um, I have bought babies. I've been I haven't been buying like from different artists until recent, you know, for my private collection. And I've gotten a few, and I've I've loved them. And then some I've just been like, huh, this is different, you know. And sometimes, I don't know, you just find that you, you know, you just may not, it may not be the right baby for you. And it has nothing to do with money. It's just not the right one. But then when you think about how much you pay for it, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to let this one just sit here. Yeah, you got to go, baby. I'm sorry. We're gonna, mama going to find you a new home, okay? And that's, that's fine because somebody's going to get that baby and just absolutely love it. But the prices just are all over the board right now. Um, I was talking to somebody about prices of these one artist babies that a lot of people, you know, been buying and stuff. And I thought that the lady was charging, um, maybe she was charging um, less money. 
and she was actually charging more than I thought. And then vice versa, another one I thought was charging more money was charging less than I thought. So I think it's just, you know, you kind of have to just ask and find out like when you like a baby and then see if you're willing to pay it. Another thing is um, a lot of times if you're lucky, if you catch some of the artists on the onset, you might get a good price because um, unfortunately it's sad for the artists. Now this part collectors, y'all not gonna like this, but unfortunately there is a lot of artists out here that work is really good, but because they're not a popular artist or not prototype artist, um, people don't want to pay them what their work is really worth. And some of these artists' work is better than some of these big name artists' work. And you can actually get a really good baby um, for like a fraction of the price that you would pay for one of these name brand artists. Um, unfortunately for the artists though, they are, their work is underpriced because either a couple things. Either it really is a hobby for them and money don't mean nothing to them. Um, and they just do it because they love to do it and they just want to make money to keep replenishing their stash or whatever. Just little side money, little housewives, you know, type thing. Girl, child, I wish those was my, my, my circumstances. I wish I had them kind of problems. But um, then there are the others that are insecure about their work. Because when you paint, you're very, it's like very personal. It's like, I love her. But it's like, you're kind of, you're kind of. Kind of like people be like, oh, your surrender your work is really nice. Like people will get the babies and say they really, really love it. But, and I appreciate that. And it's, it's helped me a lot. But then you, you always feel a little insecure about your work. And to, unfortunately, some other collectors will prey on that and they will make you feel like mm, it's all right, you know, type thing. So that your prices don't go up so that they can keep getting it at a low lower cost also um price shaming people do that a lot too they will like beat you down on price and or say oh my god i can't believe she charged that much for you know a ball baby or i can't believe she charged that much for this and other well guess what i have gotten to the point where i will let it sit into the vinyl rot before i just give my work away because i know that people go right out here to these popular artists that work, it may not even be close, or it might be all right, but the coloring might be off or whatever, and they'll pay two times the amount without a blink just because of the name. So why should I get less for my work when I've put so much into it? You know what I mean? Um, so, that is another way, another time that artists charge less than what they should be getting. And then the collectors benefit. Um, and like I said, it's, you know, now that I, you know, now that I'm painting myself, I was like, oh, I feel sorry for the artist. But girl, you should know better. No, I'm just like, <laughs> but no, um, going to doll shows, unfortunately with COVID and everything is, out of the question this year again but going to doll shows and meetups you know where people are bringing all their dolls and stuff like that has really been beneficial for me and it's been beneficial for a lot of my friends especially some of my artist friends um i'll never forget one the last show that i went where one of where a couple of my artist friends had went for the first time and they were like looking at the dolls on the table. No offense to the vendors that was there. I'm not saying names or anything like that. But they were like, oh my God. They was like, I've been beating myself up about my work. And I was like, I told you your work was really good. And one in particular, she was just like, her mouth was just like stay open the whole time. Like I know she had to dry mouth because she was like, it just stayed open. She was just like, oh, I just... Oh my gosh. And then, you know, you're looking at the prices and you're looking at the work and you're like, yeah, girl. Like, that's how it is. I'm like, that's why I was telling them. I had been telling them that their work was really good. But they were like, it's okay. But I thought they just were saying that being, you know, just being humble. 
But she really thought her work wasn't all that. And then when she went to the show, she was like, she looking like, shoot, my work is the bomb. <laughs> like I told you, girl. And um, But yeah, a lot of people, you know, you, you'd be surprised. And then vice versa. There are some people that just take bad photos of their work. And I'm like, looking at their work in person, I'm like, oh my God, this, your work is like amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, girl, like I didn't think that. So the doll shows help because then like I, like even um, the Rose doll show is a bigger audience. And, um, you know, I love both shows. And if I everything ever get back to normal, I think I'll try to go to both. Because what happens is you get to see what's out there and you see all these these babies and then sometimes you see people artist style. So of course, granted, most people, most people, some people ain't got the good sense to go and them because they will bring that old trash. Uh, girl, did you bring this to the show and put it on display? Girl, who, who bring their worst to the show? But anyway, we're not going to talk about that. I'm just saying most people going to bring their best to the doll show so you got to keep that in mind too some people work gonna look the same outside and on you know on the table however you get a feel of who work you know some people work look so good baby if you mess up a little bit you still good you know what i mean so you're going to get a feel of how their work how their texture is so when you see them on camera when you leave from the show you kind of got an idea like the, the type, the coloring of their babies and stuff. Even if their camera is a little off, you'd be like, yeah, but her work is really good. And I bet you she got more detail in it than the picture is picking up. Like she normally do really nice modeling, but it's subtle. So on camera, it's not picking up. So you have an idea if that makes sense. Um, so doll shows and um, meetups are good. Like at their, when I did a meetup, and I went to Atlanta one year. Um, somebody was there and she had a baby. And I didn't know the baby was as nice as it. I didn't know that some of the babies was as nice as they were. But in person, they looked better in person than they did on camera. If that makes sense. On their videos and stuff like that. Or their, you know. And I was like, okay. So it's she real cute. She and I think I even told them that the baby. I wouldn't have never thought that the baby was as nice as it was. So you know, it's helpful. Um, you know, like I think Kay um, mentioned in her videos as well that you know it's just you know it's very hard because we're shopping online and you are going off a of video or camera and I mean pictures and. Unfortunately for me, um, the hardest part for me, I think, is silicone. Um, reborns, I think I'm a little bit more stable with the reborns. I think you can see reborns a little bit better than silicone. Silicone, because of the medium, it's so weird. And it's so hard, too. And I, and I, it's hard for the artist to, to paint them and everything. But it's, it's very hard um, to pick out a silicone baby. Because it's not about strictly about the painting. A huge percentage of a silicone baby is about the flow of the, the baby, how cuddly they are. Do they head fall back when you da, 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 da. do it wobble to the floor? Do it mm, da da da. Um, okay, so you get the point. They, and then they, um, it's about the feel, it's about. Um, the floor of the doll, like I was looking at a video just three minutes ago of a silicone baby um, from an artist that I, I've been wanting to try. But I think the sculpting is a little stiff. So even though the silicone is really nice, the baby don't fall or flop or nothing. It's just kind of like, ee, 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 ee. it's kind of stiff because of the way it's sculpted. So it's just so many things with silicone. And I think that makes it a little bit more challenging. So if you buy a baby on your first go round and it's not what you expected to be in a silicone don't kick yourself don't don't close the door on finding a really nice silicone baby that you will enjoy because it's not easy it takes it it takes real time if you're not shopping in person if you've never seen them before if you don't understand the 
the dynamics of silicone and how it works. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty tricky. So don't don't feel bad. Just you know try to sell that one and try again. And don't let people make you feel guilty about getting a baby right away and then wanting to sell it. A lot of people associate with that. Oh, the baby must not be good. Sometimes it's it's not that. It's just that they just it just wasn't what they thought it was gonna be. So you know. Don't let people get trip you into keeping a baby. I've done that myself even, believe it or not. That's true. Sometimes I feel feel like I have to keep certain babies or people will, you know, be so mad at me. But it's my money. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> she meant what she said too. Mm. <laughs> but um, but no. Yeah, it's, it's so... Yeah, we gotta be... You know, I don't know. But I think the, the, the conversations is is healthy to be had. And I think that it's nice that I'm finding channels that I can relate to and that I enjoy watching because when I'm painting, sometimes I could just press play and just let it go. And then when it gets to the next one, I just hit play for the next one. And I, I just, you know, I'm just happy about that because for a while, you know, people had kind of drifted off. Yeah. And so, I, and I want to get back, I'm going to get back into rhythm with, you know, doing stuff with my babies and stuff. But I just, like I said, I just have a few moments here and there and I just want to sit because I don't get to sit still and just talk to you guys. Um, I've wanted to go live like all weekend, but it just never, the moment never came. And I kept planning for going and last night I was like I was gonna go but eight o'clock came and I was sleepy and I just fell asleep I'm just you know I'm just so tired you know working full-time two full-time jobs basically is what it feels like and you know being a mom so anyway that is it I'll talk to you guys later thanks for watching another long video bye bye